All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Guy Bauer, who is in the Chicago area. How are you doing, Guy? Good. How are you doing? Excellent. Excellent. And Guy is the founder and creative director of Umalt. And Guy's been making commercial videos for over 20 years and is author of Death to the Corporate Video, A Modern Approach That Works. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today, actually, is the biggest mistakes B2B marketers are making with their videos. Because let's face it, I mean, video has become so incredibly important, so accessible. People are churning out videos to beat the band. Uh, so, so, Guy, what are, what are some of the big mistakes people are making? The biggest mistake is they make a video. And uh, that may <laughs> sound s silly, but they they uh, rush into making the video. They they see the end result is the video, so they go to the fast fastest path to that, which is the video production, the video day, and the that's a huge mistake because they're forgetting the idea of a strategy and a creative idea. And my little metaphor is that, you know, a video is like an intercontinental ballistic missile. And if, if you have a metaphor that's less violent than this one, I'll take it. But I thought you were going to ask me if you have a, an ICBM, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so the video is the ICBM. The video is the missile, right? Um, and uh, it goes really high and fast and then lands on a target. The issue is, is by making a video first, rushing into making a video what you're what you're doing is bypassing the most important part of that missile and the most important part of the missile is actually the warhead if a missile lands without a warhead it just destroys mm -hmm. itself and mm -hmm. you know, leaves no impact any, anywhere it just crumples um it needs a warhead to actually fulfill its mission the strategy and the creative is the warhead for your video. What lots of brands do is they launch empty missiles. They basically make a ton of them. They're very uh, expensive looking. They look great, right? Like a, a, a missile taking off looks cool yeah. and it has all dynamic properties. It's shiny, it's got fins and guidance systems and all that stuff, but it's missing the warhead. And, and what is the warhead? The warhead is the message that you're trying to get into your target audience. And so that's why I think rushing into production is the biggest mistake that brands make. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. And especially, um, and especially now, because it's become so easy to create video. I didn't say it's become easy to create good video. I just said it's become easy to create video uh, that, that the rush to get stuff out, uh, I think trumps the, the strategic element that you're talking about. Absolutely. Um, there's this phenomenon in NASA called Go Fever. And uh, it's what led to Apollo 1 and Challenger mm. to some extent. And what happens is there's such a rush to go to launch, right? That anything that could be um, a barrier, as seen as a barrier to that launch is seen, is kind of swept under the rug. And that's what tons of brands do is they get go fever. They need this video. You know, they, they're they launching their product on April 1st. So they need it for that launch. And what they'll do is bypass a lot of, well, have we really flushed out the audience? Those questions are, well, yeah, but we need it April mm -hmm. 1st. And so it's, you really have to stop go fever uh, when you, when you start mm -hmm. seeing it. And that is really to slow down and I think the biggest tool brands have in their toolbox is to sleep on it. Mm. Write down the script, sleep on it. Still not sure, sleep on it again. Take the whole weekend off from it. Take the whole week off from it. And what's going to happen is eventually that idea sitting there will over time either morph or be proven like, yeah, yeah, actually that's good. Let's do it. Slow down. Yeah, and, and no, I, I totally agree with you. I think one of the strange anomalies that we've seen over the last number of years is once upon a time, okay, like video was extremely expensive, right? Uh, and, and you have to get an external production company and all of that, and you have to dedicate time and money. and get, So in some ways, 
you were kind of forced to do a lot of the prep work. And sometimes to, if it was a decent company, they would force you to do the prep work and all of that. However, seen as videos become very easy to produce and that uh, people people went from one extreme to the other saying high production values saying okay production values don't matter therefore nothing matters and i think that's the problem with it because you can have low production values and very high quality content good targeting that so it it still matters where people think that nothing really matters it's just a question of getting it out there yeah, you I can't say it any better than what you just, I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, that is so true. And it's, it's, you know, it's that whole thing, well, we can do it, but should we, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think there is something to be said of trial and error, right? Right. Um, and, and getting stuff out there and, and not letting perfection be the enemy of good and all that stuff. But, you know, it still isn't cheap to make a, mm -hmm. you know, a high quality video. And so... Um, yeah, we've just noticed that when brands are willing to go on a journey with us and our timelines are, you know, usually they, they lead to a little gasps, you know, right. so our timeline is around 15 to 16 weeks and they're like, what? Mm. That's so slow. But I've just seen it over the past, you know, decade that right. every time we rush, it's always, you know, it's always regretted. Uh, I always say to my client, you know, no one's you know, just like if we think about, you know, Apollo one or challenger, right. Not to say that what we're doing, making videos is, sure. you know, going to cause death or whatever, but, you know, go fever caused them to, to morph the mission from launching people into space, returning them safely, go fever, turn that mission into launch it. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They succeeded. Mission accomplished, launched. But you know what happened. No yeah. one is going to remember that the NASA team moved heaven and earth to launch it. They just remember the failure. It's the same thing with marketers and your stakeholders. Yes, you know, your CMO or CEO is breathing down your neck to get this thing, this video out in three weeks. Six months after and the video isn't effective, the CEO, CMO, your stakeholder isn't going to remember that you moved heaven and earth to get it done in three weeks. They're just going to point to the failure. So mm -hmm. you, you've got to like stand stand up and 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 uh, and, and slow down and and worry about that programming, worrying about the the warhead. Mm -hmm. And when you work with when you work with clients, right? Uh, how do you help them understand the scripting element of it? Because I think again. Uh, this is something that sometimes is 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 again like overlooked as a skill because people think that okay well I, I've done loads of presentations and speeches and stuff I know how to put together presentations therefore it's easy for me to put together a script and then you know they can figure out the visuals but when you're working with your clients how do you explain to them that scripting a video and is very different from scripting a presentation or something else yeah again you're 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 hitting it I mean almost like you've seen our presentation <laughs> and have been in our calls. Uh, a common thing I see with, uh, with brands, especially B2B brands, is what they do is a straight trans, they transpose a white paper or a sales sheet that's mm -hmm. written in bullet form into a video. And, you know, just like how you can't transpose a white paper into a presentation it's two different languages and you can't transpose a presentation you know into a uh, web copy two different languages it's two different languages it's the same with video video is its own medium it has many streams of data it's got the visual what you can see it's got the auditory what you can hear it's got color it's got sound uh it, music and sound effects, it's got so many data streams, actually infinite data streams. And it's, it's not about just slapping in a white paper and slapping in some stock footage that matches up with the white paper and what we see that time and time again. It's actually its own art form, it really is. And it's about the, the visuals being in concert with the audio. And that really takes an expert. And that's where we see, you know, that's, that's why scripting is so important and not just scripting. It's not about having a copywriter who does websites. 
It's about mm -hmm. having a copywriter who does videos because the copywriter is thinking in terms of how they can leverage all the different data streams that they have available with the medium of video. Yeah, because often you see uh, you see a video where they start out very enthusiastically, but then they lose it as they go along because, to your point, they've never really mapped it out. It was just a almost like a stream of consciousness in some ways. But but you see that often. You see them start out bright, like like a presentation, and then it just trails off. Yeah, and that's you know that's simply a function of not having a story in mind. And a story is simple, it's beginning, middle and end. Mm -hmm. But ask any of your cousins who've tried to start write a screenplay or whatever, you know, how that screenplay is going. Now, I actually have a screenwriter cousin who's doing very well, <laughs> but uh, she doesn't hear this and think I'm talking about her. But, yeah. you know, like, it's why all of us try to write a movie or the great American novel or, you know, whatever. And it always fizzles out because it's really hard to write a story. Mm -hmm. It is impossibly hard to write a story the more i'm in this business the more i'm like oh my gosh like it is so hard and and that's why that's it there's an arc there's a reason why uh certain netflix shows go crazy it's and it's all based on story and yeah. so that's where we see a lot of uh brands struggling and that's where you get the videos that all follow the same tropes those tropes are that intersection in Tokyo, Shibuya intersection with all the things and people crossing and then a word that says disruption. Or in other videos, the word is collaboration or scientists looking through microscopes <laughs> and the earth rising. I mean, there's all these tropes and that is a function of a lack of a story. And so what brands ends up, end up doing is they take their white papers and then they just find the direct uh, mm -hmm. Like they just search in the stock video site for whatever that line is about. And that doesn't make an engaging video. A video has a soul and the, the root of that soul is the story. And it's simple, beginning, middle and end. Very simple, easy to say, impossibly hard to do. Yeah, yeah. And I would encourage people, if you've never actually looked, I, I would encourage you to look at, uh, at a screenplay. Uh, and just realize and uh, maybe one that you know even of a movie or whatever that you've seen and then realize like how little room you have there you know like one page is one minute or something but it's dialogue and and then how you translate that and think of how difficult that is now pull it back to what you're doing yourself and realize that it's it, it is about in many ways as you said it's a it's an extremely iterative process because you have to pare it down to the bare necessities. Yeah, I like to say it's not about the important many. Your product or service probably has pages and pages and pages of reasons why it's so great. And they're, they are all important and there's a lot of them. It's not about the important many, it's about the significant few. Mm -hmm. People that engage with a piece of content, whether that be a video, presentation, whatever, will only remember 5% of what they hear, but will remember 100% of how it made them feel. Mm -hmm. So don't try to put everything in. People aren't taking notes while they're watching your video and hearing mm -hmm. all the bullet points of why your product or service is so great. Just focus on one or two things and the rest focus on a feeling that you can give your audience. Because if you can give your audience a feeling, now you've raised the bar for all your competition. You are now saying to the competition, now try to beat that from an emotional level. Because they can get you on price, they can get you on features and benefits. And what they, what's really hard to do is that emotional gate that you can put up if you can make that connection. And your competition really has will struggle to um to meet you there yeah and i think the the other part of that guy is is sometimes and and and, and i've seen this uh, many times is that a company will go do a video but the video won't be in their voice it won't even be matching to but they try to they say somebody i i think probably what often happens is somebody sees a video that they think is really cool and they say we need to do one just like that even if it completely doesn't match the company's brand, their voice, even their, their audience. 
yeah, you've clearly <laughs> been doing this a very long time. <laughs> yes, I, I, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and part of that, how, so how do you get your own voice? How mm -hmm. do you do something that isn't white noise? And I'm, I was literally on an engagement, John. Um, I showed our client their, their two competitive, we always do a competitive analysis. And I showed one frame from each of their competitors' video. It was the exact same shot with almost the exact same copy. Oh, mm. And so what are the odds that one of those competitors saw the other one's video and it just seeped into their brain? Now, what sense does it make for my client to make the same one of those videos? What will be added? It is just white noise. They're just contributing yeah. to the white noise. So how do you get your tone of voice? How do you add something different is the strategy and the creative and the way you get a strategy is by doing a competitive analysis looking at your persona and thinking well it's just it's it's the same thing as positioning a brand how mm -hmm. can we be completely different so that or different enough that it seems like we like um our straight competition the options are few right in replacement of us um and that's that's what you have to yeah. do. Yeah, no, no, no. You're 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 100 correct because I, I do think uh, and and on the noise factor as well. I mean, I'm a big uh, I talk about this a lot. Is I mean, there's a lot of noise created, and and if you're doing things for the sake of doing, if you're saying we need a video because our competitors have videos, okay, maybe you do need a video, but just because everybody else has one, that's not a good enough reason to do it. Uh, or if you are going to do it, you need to do it properly because, as you say, otherwise you're just adding to the noise and it's amazing how you know it's amazing the the contrast out there in some of the things that people are doing like fantastically well and then just the awful stuff that people are doing and you know what it's the there's so much if 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 you would just be brave if you make the brave decision i always reference the musical hamilton so the two main characters there's hamilton and then there's uh, Aaron Burr, and they have two different philosophies. Aaron Burr wants to be liked by all, so his philosophy is talk less, smile more. You know, don't really take sides until you know exactly who the winner is. And Hamilton's strategy is, I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and I don't care if you hate me. And mm -hmm. and that is a better business strategy, and that yeah. is to polarize, to take a stand, to be, to go through to to have enough guts to risk being unpopular. And you will be if you take a stand. But 250 years later, there's a musical about Hamilton where Aaron Burr is the bad guy. And so Hamilton was able to polarize, but then the, his big fans have stood the test of time, you know, and he's made a, an impact. So that's what brands need. It's, it really, it takes a ton of courage, I honestly, to be different. But once you are different, you almost win by default. It's almost like the, that standard um, piece of clip art that's in every PowerPoint mm -hmm. of all the blue fishes going this way, and then there's right. one red fish going this way. I mean, it is that simple. It just takes a ton of guts. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I love that. Great point to end on, um, guys. So be brave with your videos, but don't rush them. I think that's the key is that go. go do proper work with somebody like, uh, like a guy in his company. And, and figure it out because you can waste a lot of time, energy and money if you just dive in yourself and you create stuff that nobody like ever watches or doesn't support you. Uh, all of Guy's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Guy, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what your company does. Yeah, so Umalt is a B2B video marketing agency. We work with brands uh, in usually in the mid market. Um, who are who sell a very complicated, hard to understand product or service to a very specific audience. So usually they have something to do with AI, digital transformation, cloud, complicated financial products or healthcare solutions. And we come in and not only distill your message down, but then we'll make a really compelling video, a, a video that um almost makes a wave in the industry like did you see that video mm -hmm. and so where you, you when your salespeople walk into a room uh 
their the brand's reputation precedes them in the form right. of that story and so that's what we do yeah fantastic i love it uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.